Hi everyone and welcome back. For our third video overview of the week, we are jumping into one of the biggest and most exciting topics in Math 119, Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. This is far too big a topic to cover in one or even two lessons. We're going to be looking at this over the next couple weeks. I'll remind you that this week we've been talking all about approximations. We started by discussing Newton's method, which allowed us to approximate the roots of an equation, and then we saw how to approximate values of our function given just a few data points to work with. We did this using polynomial interpolation. But often we are given the equation of our function, y equals f of x, but still need some kind of an approximation. Approximations can be very handy when estimating limits, when taking integrals, when doing lots of things in calculus. But currently, the best form of approximation that we have is a linear approximation, right? Using the tangent line. In many situations, however, the linear approximation just doesn't cut it. We need something a little bit better. So in this video, we're going to take everything we know about linear approximations and extend it to get quadratic approximations, cubic approximations, and in general, nth order polynomial approximations. This is such a neat topic, so I hope you're excited. If we're going to generalize our notion of linear approximation, it'll be helpful to first recall where exactly the linear approximation came from. So suppose that we have some function y equals f of x. That's given here in yellow. And we wish to approximate our function at a point x naught. Now when you first learned this stuff, you probably didn't just write down the equation of the tangent line, right? You started with something simpler, a secant line. You drew a line between this point and some point on your curve nearby, and you said, all right, that line roughly models the behavior of my function over this small interval. The equation of that line was given by something like this, y equals f of x naught plus the slope of the line, delta y over delta x, times x minus x naught. Of course, this is not the best approximation because the interval might actually be pretty wide. So to get a sharper approximation of our function's behavior, we shrink it. That is, we pull this point x1 closer and closer and closer to x0. We reduce the width of this gap, delta x. When we do that, our secant line becomes a better and better approximation for the function's behavior at x0. As we let delta x go all the way to 0, this secant line turns into a tangent line. As for our equation, well, when delta x goes to 0, this slope term here, delta y over delta x, is going to turn into our derivative. So here we get y equals f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. And there you have it. The linear approximation is born. Our next job is to extend these ideas to approximate our functions with more sophisticated polynomials, like quadratics or cubics. Sounds complicated, but it's really not. If you understood all the ideas presented here, what we do next is going to make complete sense. Okay, we're moving from linear to quadratic approximations. So once again, I have this function in yellow, y equals f of x, and I want to approximate the behavior of this function near the point x equals x naught. I don't want to use a line this time, I want to use a parabola. I want to find a parabola whose graph matches what my function is doing around this point. To do this, we'll take motivation from what was done in the linear case. For linear approximations, we started by drawing a secant line through this point and some other point on our curve nearby. Well, we're going to do the same thing with parabolas. We want to draw a parabola that passes through this point and some other points on our curve. Of course, now using just two points is not enough. To determine the equation of a parabola, I'm going to need three points. So that's what I have, three points my target point x0, and then two other points x1 and x2, which I've spaced out evenly along the x-axis. They're a width of delta x apart. A parabola through these points might look something like this. Now what's the equation of this parabola? Oh, didn't we just do this? If I hand you three equally spaced out points, I should be able to find the equation of the parabola through those points, using my Newton interpolating polynomial formula. That's the formula that you see up here. Remember from our second example video that in general, we divide our terms by powers of delta x, the distance between points on the x-axis. So now the question becomes, what happens to this approximating parabola as I bring those extra points closer and closer to x naught? 
That is, what happens as I let my width, delta x, approach zero? Well, in our second picture, you can see the parabola now looks something like this. It's becoming a better approximation for my function around x naught. And when I let this width go all the way down to zero, we get a parabola that looks something like this. This is our quadratic approximation for f of x at the point x naught. Notice that the quadratic curve very closely resembles the behavior of my function near this point. Now you gotta admit, that is kinda cool. But how do we actually find the equation of this resulting parabola? Well, just like in the linear case, we start with the equation of our approximating functions, and we see what happens as we let this delta x term go to zero. In this case, a few things are gonna happen. First, this term that you see here, change in y divided by change in x, that's going to approach our derivative, f prime of x naught, just like it did before. Here, we have a term involving x1, but remember, x1 is being pulled closer and closer to x naught. So this term is actually going to approach x minus x naught. And finally, we have this delta squared y naught over delta x squared term. Now, this term is a little harder to deal with. It turns out that it approaches the second derivative at x naught, but proving this is quite difficult, so we're not going to do it here. We'll just take it as a fact. But putting everything together, we now have an equation for our quadratic approximation. We get y equals y naught, which I'm going to write as f of x naught, plus my first derivative, f prime of x naught, times x minus x naught, and then finally, my last term is the second derivative, f double prime of x naught, x minus x naught squared divided by two. And there you have it, folks, the equation of our quadratic approximation. Notice that if we ignore this quadratic term at the end, we're just left with our usual linear approximation. But why stop here? Why stop with a quadratic? Let's see if we can extend these ideas one more time to get a better approximation using a polynomial of degree n. Okay, we want to use the ideas from the previous slides to approximate our function at a point x naught with a polynomial of degree n. To do this, we're going to follow exactly the same approach that we did with the parabolas. We're going to find such a polynomial that passes through x naught and some other points nearby x1, x2, all the way up to xn. And we'll do this using our interpolation formula. Those points, x0, x1, all the way up to xn, we'll assume that they're evenly spaced out on the x-axis, with a distance of delta x between them. Now the question becomes, what happens to our polynomial as we let that delta x term go to zero? Well, if the distance between the points, delta x, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then all of my points, x1, x2, and so on, they're all getting closer and closer to x naught. So this term that you see here is going to converge to x minus x naught. These terms that you see here are all going to do the same. This goes to x minus x naught, this goes to x minus x naught, and so on. The other terms that will change when we take a limit as delta x goes to zero are terms like delta y naught over delta x. As we've seen before, this term is going to approach our first derivative, f prime of x naught. Uh, similarly, as I mentioned on the last slide, this delta squared y naught over delta x squared, that's going to approach our second derivative. Now we aren't gonna prove this, but the pattern does continue. In general, delta to the n y naught over delta x to the n is going to approach our nth derivative at x naught, f n of x naught. Okay, now that we've analyzed how each piece changes as we apply this limit, we're ready to write down our nth order polynomial approximation. It's given by y equals y naught, which once again I'm going to denote by f of x naught, plus f prime of x naught, x minus x naught, plus f double prime of x naught, x minus x naught squared, Right? We have two x minus x naught terms here, divided by two, and we continue. Our last term is going to be fn at x naught, the nth derivative, times x minus x naught to the n, divided by n factorial. 
Now this expression may look pretty ugly, but there's a very clear pattern that's emerging. And we might be able to more easily recognize it if we write this whole ugly thing down in summation notation. We could write this as the sum from k equals zero to n of f k at x naught, that's the kth derivative, times x minus x naught to the k, all divided by k factorial. Now this formula is extremely important. We're going to be using it all the time, so commit it to memory ASAP. Say it once when you wake up in the morning and once when you go to bed at night. It's so special that we even give it its own notation. We write this as pnx naught of x. This tells me that my polynomial is of degree n, and I've centered it around the point x naught. I've sort of looked for my approximation at the point x equals x naught. We refer to this polynomial as the nth order Taylor polynomial. Taylor, after the mathematician who found it. The nth order Taylor polynomial of our function f centered at x naught. Okay, the theory is done. Let's now jump into an example to see how this is used.